What's up, everybody? Danny here from The Threshold. I am privileged tonight to be sitting here with Dead Reckoning out of Georgia. Hardcore band, heavy metal. I, these guys just got done practicing, so I'm hopefully not going to absolutely destroy them with my pestering of questions. But guys, what's happening? Can we get some introductions and go around the room and let's figure out who I'm actually talking to? Yeah, I'm uh, Ryan. I'm the drummer for the band. Brain, I play bass. Taylor, I'm the vocalist. I'm Mike Chaos. I'm guitar. It's great to meet you guys and great to have you all here. Thanks yeah, so man, cool. we're excited, man. Thanks for having us. So I'm I'm going to jump right in. Um, I, I'm I'm across the, the socials, and you guys have just plastered a number of dates. Yeah, so eighty dates. Off, go ahead. There's eighty dates total on this tour. Dude, that is amazing! Congratulations, first and thank foremost. You. Thank so, you. Thank you. How did this all come about? Because this this is no small little trek, a couple weekends. Like, what you got going on? Well, I mean, we kind of slowly, like, over the years have been morphing into, like, all right, let's push it a little bit longer. Let's push it a little bit longer. And then we finally just came to the conclusion that if you we really want to put our all into this, we just got to say, fuck it and go. Yep. I mean, just push. Yeah. And so here we are. Um, we decided this what six months ago, probably. Yeah. yeah. And now it's almost fully booked. So it's, it's a really good feeling because we going through it, we've had struggles trying to book just even a two week tour anywhere. And now yeah, in the past, it's yeah. like people are just like fucking hitting us up and just like, hey, let's do this. Like, cool. So yeah. everything's coming together very yeah. smoothly, much smoother than we've had in the past. Yeah, a lot easier than it used to be. Mm. That is really cool and really encouraging to hear. Can you guys tr attribute this to anything in particular? I know you guys hit the socials really hard. You're really active online, but hey, is, is there any rhyme or reason? We think it's just post-pandemic. Everybody's itching to have some good music out there. That could definitely happen. I mean, I, I would say that's a lot of it, tell you the truth, because when we, we played a lot before the pandemic, when we came back, every show was, had double, double, triple the amount of people that any show would have had be, beforehand, no matter who was playing, you know? So, I mean, every show that we've played, especially since Taylor's been back now, like that's also been our kickstart because all four of us are firing on the same cylinders now where before, you know, we've had some lacking on a little bit here, which makes another person want to lack because they don't feel that that person's doing his job. But now everybody's doing their job. So it's like we're all just hitting it as hard as we can, you know. That's got to be fun. So how long yeah. have you guys been jamming together? Uh, the band's now going on 12 years. We're going, me and the drummer here, Ryan, we're going on nine years. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And, and Brian's right behind him at like eight-ish, yeah. you know. Uh, and then Taylor, this is his second time back with us. He was with us six years ago. Yeah. For for, he was with us about a year then. He should have been the, the singer on the, the last album that we put out, but he, you know, he cut out right beforehand. So we had to get that one recorded. And then now he's back, so he's been back almost two years now. Yeah. Two years so, yeah. Summer, right? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's awesome, man. It's, it's cool to hear that you guys are firing on all cylinders for it. So, with this kind of longevity together, obviously, you know, you, you're kind of figuring out what works, what doesn't, and you're yeah. about to be crammed together for an 80-day 80, 80 tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what, what, what's the feeling in the room for that? Is it, you know, like, have you guys kind of figured out some of the parts and how to get uh, through it? I'd say we are used to it, but in the past, you know, we've had our hic hiccups and our little headaches and all, but I mean, I think this tour so far, we're, we're all pretty stoked for it. Like, and, I don't see. And we've also learned from trial and error that yeah. it's more of a preventative thing. It's like how much we've already planned for these tours will make them much more smoother for our psyche and all yep. that, where we're all going to be like, it's going to be gliding in my perspective. Um, yeah. It's just you, as you do your tour, as you do your show, you learn from whatever you didn't do correctly and you use that to make the future better. Yeah. So as long as you're progressing from the past and moving towards the future with a better aspect or outlook on this, I mean, everything's going to be better. Okay, that and, and we're really more a family than a band. That's true. That, that like all, true. all our families are interconnected. It's just so we can, we can kind of get in fights and then – Walk away from each other for an hour and then be fine. Well, we, we, me and Brian, we noticed it last tour. Me and him got in a tussle for like a week where we weren't talking the whole tour, you know, like 
and we were ready to just go home and that was the end of that one you know but uh we me and him were a couple of weeks ago we were looking at the footage from those shows of that time frame and like the minute you know minute we said you know we hit the midi and said go you can't even tell me and him are fighting it's like it's it's the, we just hit go in our heads and we played our set and we did what we're supposed to do and yeah I was gonna say the same exact thing it didn't yeah. matter what we did that day once we touched that stage and said we're ready to play it, all of our fucking thoughts eluded us and we just hit it running yeah, everything else just kind of melts away yeah yep. that, I, that, that sounds like 30, that's how the magic's supposed to happen that's yeah awesome. at least for thirty minutes to an hour yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey you know if, if that's what it takes it's what it takes right right right. <laughs> So while you guys are, are are touring and going through, I, do you do you do anything special like a, a pre-show ritual? Is there anything to kind of get you guys in the right mindset for it? Um, I mean, this in the most straightest way possible. Mike stretches me out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so put six behind the back. We do it every time. He yeah. pushes up just to get my arms limber and ready. And we do a fist bump and you know do a little talk. Yeah, we all have a little like you know warm up with our you know bodies wise minds wise yeah. vocally you know he's trying to get us better at the vocal warm-ups too when we do it as backups i mean there, there's there's a little i wouldn't say ritual the ritual would be the fist bump like we don't go on stage without fist bumping you know like nothing nothing special but it's just a little quick like hey let's fucking do this you know yeah. Yeah. and kisses yeah <laughs> oh yeah he kisses me every show <laughs> yeah i'm always mid solo and he'll come up and give me a kiss See, I mean, and that's that's love. That's the family right there, right? You got you got to be able to have some fun with it too. Yeah, but the time he tried to go kiss his penis was a little weird. But let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we 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 try not to be doing that on at the show. I mean, you know, yeah. what you guys want to do afterwards? That's on you, right? Um, <laughs> that's where they mess up when they put the twenty one and older. We know what we can get away with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay, so, this is your house fault. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioned some vocal warm ups, and, and one of the things that I did want to ask this is specific to Taylor. So, you, you recently had a, uh, a, a little bit of a, a, a sing off, if you want to call it that, with, uh, with, with Alex Terrible. Yes. Slaughter to Prevail. Um, what was that like, and who? Who else would you want to go head to head with? Um, the the battle was pretty cool. Uh, me and him, you know, we've been trying to get together for years, and people's been talking about it over social media for years as well. And we finally got the opportunity to do it. Um, it was all around very cool. And uh, next on the list is Will Ramos. Will Ramos, very cool, very cool. And now, it, are are you? Are you trying to already make that happen, or are you just hoping for for fate to deliver? Um, we just we just got to get around them. That's it. We'll figure it out from there. Yeah. Well, we we haven't played a show nowhere near these them. So, gotcha. Yeah. And then you did you see the other one? He has one with Tom Barber. Uh, so and, one with Tom Barber. And Franz, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Franz was just fun though. They've been buddies a long time, so. Franz was just bullshit, and everybody keeps getting him trash for because he cupped the mic, you know. But yep, whatever. <laughs> hey, that's, that's fun, man. That's yeah, fun. yeah. So I, I kind of want to go back to the you know again social social media presence. This tour, you guys have the dead army, and yep. I mean it looks like you guys have done exactly what you know anybody commanding an army should do. And I mean you you guys have really just raised them up and sent them out to do you know to really lay the groundwork yeah yeah and they've been doing amazing yeah they really i have i mean I, i've i've said more than once uh, on the socials you know thanking them the like i said the usually i i had to be the downer but usually these shows you get you know some locals on there the locals say like one time hey we got a show they bring their girlfriends nobody else comes you know, we're on tour, so we might have 5, 10, 15 people over lucky come. But, you know, that's the show, you know. Well, this tour, we're seeing the promoters push. We're seeing the bands push. We're seeing the fans push. We're seeing everything come together, you know. So I, I'm just I'm just ecstatic to see, like, half of these shows look incredible, you know. Yeah. Not just the, the venue, but the, the, the lineup, the... The fans that I know are coming, like, I'm just stoked to see what happens. 
it, it, it's cool seeing everybody mobilize and get the the community to support the music yeah. where it's at and it's not just Hey, this one band is coming through and that's that it's, I mean, going out and truly supporting the ones that are out there grinding it and making it happen. Yeah. So that, that's bad. Yeah, I mean, and, and we, we went myself and uh, the booker and our manager, Danny, we, we busted our ass to find the best bands in the area that will get the best, you know, outcome to the show, the best promotion. We've tried to get the best shows, the best venues. And, and uh, I'm shocked the venues that we got as late as we booked them, you know, we should have booked them, six months earlier but somehow they were still available for us and then even this one that keeps blowing my mind is venues of a high stature has canceled shows to book us instead i guess they didn't That's they had cool. shows that were like smaller they didn't think we we're going to do anything so they got rid of those to then put us there and then bring in certain locals you know so that that's blowing my mind i've never expected that ever that, that's got to be a wild feeling, too, especially, yeah, yeah. you know, like you guys said, you've been doing this 12 years, give or take for some of you yeah. to now be able to sit back and see this come in again. That, that That's that's huge. Congratulations again on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I kind of feel like it relates to your earlier question where you're like this whole everybody's itching to get out of COVID. And at first we looked at the whole COVID aspect as like, oh shit, we can't do anything like this is hurting us. But it's kind of like we we're time, done. Yeah, it's kind of like a time reset, like we're kind of in a spot where we should maybe be thankful for that aspect. Like everybody was, couldn't do anything. And now everybody's ready just to come out and support and have a good time. And and for us, I think we use that moment. Well, like with the, all these songs you're hearing, we wrote in those timeframes, you know, like, so it's like, we were planning that and like what we're going to do and how we're going to push. And now we're getting to do that. You know, we did two tours uh, last year, but they were just small, you know, small tours. And then we took the year off basically. So now we're that's why we're crushing this tour this year. <laughs> so so what's on the horizon new music wise? I know we, it was Gallows was was fairly recent. Yeah. And yeah. Gallows, yeah, Bonds, and Media are the first three that dropped from the album. Okay. We have a brand new one that we wrote that we we keep saying is our best song yet. And we wanted that to release before this tour, but we're still gonna play it on tour, no matter what. So we um just in that way we can you know, like see how everybody's taking it too and we if we have to adjust it a little now we can i guess you know but <laughs> that should be released between the first leg of the tour and the second leg of the tour awesome. so we have a month we have a month off between those two so when we come back i'm gonna get that finished and hopefully we can get that kicked out and then the album we're hoping the album will be done full full album uh 10 to 12 songs will be done i mean before the year's over Hell yeah. And that's with all these tours too. So that's kind of what's setting us back and back and back. Yeah, no kidding. Holy crap. I mean, that, that, that's, that's a hell of a schedule to get through the rest of the year with between the, yeah, between the yeah. tour, the, the drops, and, and everything that comes with it. So, well, we're trying to take it. I mean, while it's almost impossible to keep up with these guys, what they got labels and all, but if you look at the big guys like Slipknot and Lamb of God, they'll do an eight month tour, get back, put a new album out, tour on that, get back you know, put another album. I was like, where did you have time to record this? I'd never, nope. you know, you never had a moment off. So we're trying to take that mentality of just go, 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 go. Don't stop. So do you guys anticipate writing while on the road? Is there a strict, no, we're just kind of hitting what we've got. How does that work for you guys? Well, I mean, of course we're going to always have ideas and like we'll bounce them off of each other, but it's not like, no, we're not going to, we're going to focus on this tour at hand. Now we should always plan for the future. Like if we've got a good song idea, just at least like get a guitar and record it real quick or like just a, a mic or something, anything just to have that snippet of an idea. And then we can mold from there and see how it goes. But it's always good to have an extra in the spank bank. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, So we got new music. We got a tour. Any music videos that that we can expect, or, or a a compilation of live footage from the tour? I mean, it, we are yeah, set up to do that. Yeah. So that was the initially when before Danny, uh, we gave Danny the tour manager spot. He initially hit us up with that idea of filming us on tour and showing the behind the scenes stuff because not as many people are pushing this many dates like we we're trying all the time, you know. So he just wants to show that aspect of it and how we do it and handle ourselves. He had met us uh, when we toured with Pigweed and saw how we operated and how we handled everything. So he was already 
you know, wanting to do this with us. Yeah, and it gives a good perspective of, like, how it really is to be a DIY band. Yeah, like it shows the people who are one who are one are almost on the threshold of trying to do the things that we're doing, and gives them insight. Like you better pre- be prepared, or maybe it's easier than they think it is, or it's harder. Yeah, because we think don't have is. any label, we don't have any yeah, promotion so. company, none of that. It's all us, just us. Yep, just us and the Dead Army you talked about earlier. Like that's it, man. It's a lot to be said for the grind right there, and I mean, obviously yeah. you guys are killing it. So, which is really just again, it's just really cool to get to see. Um, from a, a musical influence perspective, I know, you, you know, obviously you, you're referencing a, a Slipknot, a Lamb of God for, you know, kind of how they're churning stuff out. Where do you guys go for inspiration at this point? And is that the same musical influence for you guys? I mean, I guess we probably kind of lean towards them in some aspects of like how our music sounds and like trying to cultivate our sound off of them but not also rip off of them well recently we were asked like you because we've already always kind of pushed hard but we've like really started pushing hard lately and we were asked why that came about and a couple of us saw uh wage war when we got to play welcome to rockville and wage war's show is so professional like from the minute they hit go to that last note is just perfect you know what i'm saying so it's like we're trying to emulate all those guys, the guys we want to open for, the guys we want to tour with. How would they do it is how we want to do it, you know. But at the same time, we're not like we're not pushing samples like a lot of these bands are. We're still doing it all ourselves. You know, we have a couple samples, but it's not like the song, you know. Yep. So it's like we're still trying to push all our on our own, not go too digital. Yeah. <laughs> But then the idea that, you know, sometimes you just, you, you, yeah. you look at all aspects of writing a song. We don't just say, okay, cut and dry. Once we play it through, that's it. No, we, when we get to the uh, recording process, we really comb through and we're like, okay, can we do something different there? Mm-hmm. Can we add something or take away something? Sometimes too much is, you know, too much. Yeah, there's probably like 14 bass lines to every song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't, it's not locked until we say like, okay, it's recorded and it's done. You know, that's the moment it's done. That's cool. So um, I'm going to switch gears for a minute because obviously we're, we're talking music and music is essentially it's a way of life, right? It's, it's kind of oxygen for us. But I want to have a little bit of fun and really get to know you guys. And whoever happens to be watching this, you really get to understand that as, as much as this is music, there's more to it, right? Yeah. So I'm going to throw out some random questions and I'll let you guys decide who, who is going to answer what. But these are going to be all over the place. So, okay. are, are you ready? I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire away. Let's do this shit. <laughs> all right. So, if you can have any superpower, what would it be? Oh, teleportation, uh, compulsion, the Ooh. power to make every car in front of me on the road pull over. <laughs> <laughs> Man, invisibility. There you go. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, Brian's good at it already. <laughs> DC or Marvel? Marvel. I'm definitely Marvel. I don't really care. That's a toss. I mean, I probably Marvel, honestly, but I still like a lot of DC characters. Like I like Arrow. DC as well, but Marvel's better. Like Arrow and Flash. Overall. Some of my favorite characters. See, this, 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 this is how fights start. This is great. I like it. <laughs> this band started with a question just like this. <laughs> oh, do tell. Now I'm curious. So the so the very first person that I started the band with was the other original guitarist. His name was Chris Shoup. And uh, we were talking on text, you know, back and forth, probably for two, three hours. And finally, he was, you know, sizing me up. And the last question he was asked, and he was like, all right, man, this is for all the marbles. He was like, Star Trek or Star Wars? And I had I had to think about it because I do like them both. But I said Star Wars. And he was like, all right, man, you, well, let's fucking do this, you know, and. And he, That's you know, cool. we, still, we go to see him every year when we're on tour and he's got a giant like case of Star Wars stuff and like the life size R2-D2. And so I answered it right. <laughs> God, God knows where you guys would be had you had you actually said Star Trek, right? Like, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that never would have happened. He was with me for the first three years, you know, so yeah. That's awesome. Well, what, what's the first thing you guys would buy if you just won the lottery? This tour that we've been talking about, yeah, there's a tour we we want bad right now with a larger band, and it's very expensive. So, 
So, so for those that are, are that are listening right now, um, in order to help support you, there's can, can we buy merch online? Oh yes. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. How, we how got, do we go out and support you right now? We got merch online or at every show that we we play. Uh, there's uh, if you go to just our main website, uh, deadreckoningofficial.com, There's a little slide that even says merch on it. It'll take you right to the page. You know, so. Everything you you want is on that website, you know. And not only that, but on our media's like Facebook and stuff. Share, like, comment, like, just help us. Yeah, they got the those. They have those new yeah. star things where you can send stars. Like all that stuff sends a couple bucks into our yeah, pockets. Everything you know? helps. I even put a tip jar on our. Uh, we go live every night when we play out. You know, I put a little tip jar, so even five bucks would help. You know. That's awesome. So I, I guess with you guys out on the road, you're obviously you're you got as much as you can possibly handle to, to make this tour happen and then continuing to look ahead for bigger tours, bigger opportunities. What do you guys do when you rest? Like or or do you rest? Man, we don't get many. We don't really rest. We try, but we, we don't get many of them days. Yeah, you know, like Mikey, he's constantly working on the band. And then when we're home, me and Brian, we're working other jobs just to, you know, have a, a good packing of money just to get Do you it. mean at, when we're at home or on tour? Either one. Okay. Either, I mean, at some point, there's got to be a little bit of downtime that's well, just tour, we like. We eat a bunch of edibles music. and get in the hotel hot tub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, and that's literally <laughs> about as good as to get. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. One tour we were fucking playing uh we had a ball and we we're just keeping it from touching the water we did yeah, like yeah. two hours yeah, two three hours just... but that's it we never get time to or the you know the times of shows put you out of the timeline to like go see like famous things or all that yeah. touristy crap you can't do that on tour you no. know not at our level maybe when you're bigger you know when other people set your gear up and other people take your stuff that's when you can maybe take a moment off but not yet but best you've got is to be able to yeah actually drive past it and look out the window and go, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, when we're not on tour, I get, I do my best to give these guys a break. I handled 90% of everything online. Uh, I, I'm the one that worked with the booker and the manager to book all this fucking tour. You know, so it's like I wanted them to have all the time to be able to make that extra money they need to be able to push through this and all that, you know, because I'm a veteran. I, I get a disability check, you know, so – that pays for me to be able to sit here and do this, you know, whereas these guys need, you know, they got to still grind a little bit for money and, but we're for making now, it work, you now. know, for now. Yeah. But I, we, we foresee that changing quickly. Like we, for, we have a, we have a, a goal in our head here and if we can hit it, I think everything's going to change. That's cool. Well, as a, you know, just completely aside, thank you for your service. I, I appreciate you, thank you, uh, you, thank you. To get out there and, Obviously, uh, you know, just following on socials, you're obviously still very, very, very proud. And there's a lot to be said for that. So utmost respect oh, yeah. and uh, just a lot of love for you for that one. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, so I, I want to be mindful of time and the fact that everybody in this world has a short attention span. Right. So, yeah. you know, I, I want to be very mindful of that, particularly given that you guys are still coming right off of band practice and we're still willing to give me that time. So so thank you. Yeah. Um a lot of bands that are out there are trying to figure out, I mean, what it is that Dead Reckoning's doing because, I mean, I'm watching the fan base grow. So what what would you say to bands that are starting out? How would you encourage them? Uh, I would, so I would say you need to grasp hold of social media today, learn how to use it, get every friend you got, get them to push your name, get their friends to push your name. Why I say that is most, these bands we play with they have two to four thousand likes or followers and they usually will never go beyond that like four thousand followers for a band is a lot you know well we had five thousand before we played our first show but it was only because we got on social media and we went out there and i anybody that was even holding a guitar or looked like they're holding a microphone i friended all of them you know what i'm saying like it facebook allows you five thousand friends Make 5,000 friends and see how many of them will become your friends in your band and help you. And you'll be shocked how many people you'll meet. You know, just network. That's all you got to do. And next thing you know, you're 25,000. And not you're not sure how you got there yourself. <laughs> and then also, don't be afraid to not try anything. Like, yes. push your anything. limits. Like, don't have – you need to be open-minded when you're working in this industry because anything – 
opens up possibilities. Well, like uh, right. like the vocal battles you you mentioned, like half the world hates them more than anything. The other half has blown us up big time. You know, yeah. so it's try everything you can. It does. Who cares if half the people don't like it? Other half will. You know, so and work on your stage presence. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Like there's there's the biggest thought thing. into your stage performance. Nobody wants to pay to see somebody stand on a stage and play their songs. Yeah. No matter how good the songs may be, if you're not actually entertaining people while you're playing, you're going to lose. Them. Yeah, she yeah. was rendered useless. Yeah, we see right. people that are way better musicians than us, but then they just stand they there, stand they there stare play. at their mm-hmm. their guitar, and next thing you know, 30 minutes went by and half the people walked off. You know, and it's not right because they deserved the attention but they didn't know how to grab the attention, you know? Uh, it's perfectly said right there. I think I, those are all great, great tips. And I appreciate you all being willing to kind of share some trade secrets. And, you know, what, what I've seen is this community has been all about a hand up to one another and seeing the community grow and, you know, be able to get a tour like this in place. And I mean, you guys are making it work and you guys are making this engine run and it's really been fucking cool to see. So again, a, a huge congrats to you guys. Dead Reckoning on tour. You guys keep an eye out on the socials for all of the dates. Head over to their website for, for some merch opportunities. Hang out with the guys at their shows. Show the love. Show the support. Anything we can do to keep this scene alive. Dead Reckoning, all of you guys. Huge thanks for hanging out with The Threshold tonight. Yeah, Looking forward to catching you guys on the road. Absolutely, man. Can't wait. Awesome.